Uh, it's a very great play, one. I mean, it's, it's a great play, so it's, it's one of the greats, and so an opportunity to direct a play like this is both rare, exceptional, and it's very controversial. Well, I can't really say why, other than that Shylock is, uh, uh, you know, it supposedly inhabits certain characteristics that are that are sort of considered cliché Jewish characteristics. Uh, but then cliché is not without foundation in our society. People do act with a sense of cliché. People have a relationship with cliché. Obviously they're more complex, and I think Sherlock is more complex. Uh, in fact, I think part of the reason that he acts the way he does is to cope with how he's been treated with all his life, that he's been spat on, that he's been, his, his labor has been rejected and ridiculed that uh, he's been called a cur and a dog. So he's a copes with this anti-Senate medical society in the best way that he can. Sometimes he plays the role that they've given him. Sometimes that's a conscious choice, and sometimes that's an unconscious choice. It's like uh, the very common thing about, uh, there was a problem in the black, black community in America because the black people have been told they were stupid. Well, the danger is they begin to believe that they're stupid, and it became a and, and it's sort of an innate prejudice they're trying to worm their way out of, get out of that only through thought and talk and dialogue and therapy and uh, people have been able to slowly transcend that. Uh, but it's difficult; it becomes ingrained in a, a culture and in a community. And uh, certainly, Shylock is a victim of that kind of prejudice that he then becomes the thing that they're talking about. At the same time, I think the, thing, the reason the play is much richer is that he's a character who also wants to be seen and known and recognized. And he acts in a, an ambivalent way. He hates the Christians, he says this, and yet he'll go to dinner with them. He says he won't go to dinner with them, and he won't eat pork, that he won't talk and dine, and then two scenes later he's going to dinner with them. So there is a desire on his part to somehow get the recognition that he feels the Christian society hasn't given him, to be seen, to be you know, seen as a three-dimensional person with goals, ambitions. And what's interesting, I think, about the society is that it's a very hypocritical society. The Christians are extremely hypocritical. Uh, Shylock is singular in his vices. The, the Christians are hypocritical in their vices. They, say, they sound virtuous, but they're actually viceful. And, uh, and whereas Shalek becomes quite singular in going after wanting vengeance on Antonio. And where Shakespeare, I think, why it makes it a great playwright, is he's actually writing about a complexity society. It's a society based on hypocrisy. And what society isn't based on hypocrisy? What society doesn't use hypocrisy sort of to grease the wheels, to enable it to keep functioning and moving. And it's a necessity to hypocrisy uh, that I find very interesting in the play. That's how Shylock survives all this time in an anti-Semitical society. And when he forgets to be hypocritical, then he becomes singular in his desire for vengeance because they've stolen his daughter and stolen his, his money that he loses sight of the necessity of being hypocritical. Ambivalence is really what rules our feelings. We have many feelings, and they're complex. I love this person, but I hate this person. I love them so much I could kill them. Um, I, I want to kill them, they make me so crazy. But it's, you know, it's, it's very, it comes out of passion. So there's a sense of ambivalence. So how do you know how to conduct yourself? How does one know how to move forward with action, to make a decision to marry somebody, to make a decision to um, conduct in, yourself in this manner, in a moral way. What is morality? Uh, what is an oath? What is a bond? What are, how are we bound to other people? Why is it necessary to have oaths? And so you've got Shakespeare, I think, trying to address the, the nature of ambivalence and how we conduct ourselves as human beings, and how we know something about other people 
in an ambivalent society, or in Shylock's case, an hypocritical world. And so you get that as sort of a subplot hypocrisy to the nature of ambivalence and the, 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 the love plot of Bassanio and Portia. But you know, the very first thing that Bassanio says when, a, when questioned by Antonio, do you love this woman? He says, well, she's really rich and she is fair. She's really fair and virtuous. But the first thing he says is rich. So is he falling in love with her because she's rich and he needs money because he's broke? Or is he falling in love with her because he loves her? And of course it's complex. It's not simple. And, uh, and, I, and I think that's what makes this a, a great play because it talks about the human condition in a rich way. <laughs>